Okay, so we are going to go over 7.3, which is called getting on the right wavelength. And this is, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, this is a practice understanding, which means you know enough, and now we're going to start to practice. So we're going to be doing a couple things in this lesson, right equivalent sine and cosine equations, find the, com the complete set of solutions for a trig equation. So when it says complete set of solutions, that's... Um, so far, you've, you've solved it, but you haven't found all the solutions. There's actually a lot of them, so keep that in mind. We're also going to model periodic contexts, and we're going to answer the questions, how do I write a cosine equation that is equivalent to a given sine equation and vice versa, and why might I want to do so? And then lastly, how can I determine the times when a writer will be at a certain position on the Ferris wheel? So we have, we're back to the Ferris wheel and we're in this context. And so we're going to um, review how to write um, an equation, a trig equation based on a context. So it says the Ferris wheel of the diagram has a radius of 40 feet. Its center is at 50 feet off the ground and it makes one revolution counterclockwise every 18 seconds. Write the equation of the height of the writer at any given time um, of the writer's position um, when t equals to zero, he's at position A. Okay, so um, I'm going to label my diagram as much as I can. Um, I'm just going to go this guy. My radius is 40 feet. My um, center is 50 feet. And it goes around 18 seconds. So I'm just going to go, goes like this in 18 seconds. Oops, let me use a different color. In 18 seconds. And it says, write the equation of the height of the writer um, at any time. So whenever they say height, I tend to think of like how high he is like this. I think of the, all my little triangles and me trying to find the height like this, right? And so if you remember height using that, would be the y coordinate, which would mean we are using more like sine than cosine. Okay. Yes, you can use cosine to find this, but just because it told me height, sine is going to be my easier thing. So I'm going to write my generic equation. And in fact, I will use h of t equals to a sine b. And I like to put my b on the outside. And then I'm going to start filling them in and reminding you what each of the letters mean. Okay. So I'm going to start with, um, uh, actually I'll start with these numbers. So this 40 feet here, which letter would that represent? A, B, C, or D, or does it help you find another one of those letters? Right? So in this case, 40 is my A, it's my amplitude. Okay, because it's the highest that it could go, and it's also the lowest that you are going. Does that make sense? So it's your amplitude is from the middle, it's the highest or the lowest from the middle. Okay, so there's your A. And then the next letter that we, or the next number that we encounter is this 50 feet. And 50 feet is how high the, the center is off the ground, which should indicate that's your D. This is your midline, right? And so this is going to be 50. And I should have put my middle, my, my amplitude as well, which is 40. And I'm going to copy everything that I know that it's going to stay. Okay. So the next thing that I see is my 18 seconds. So if it makes one revolution in 18 seconds, um, this is my period, right? Because that's how long it takes me to complete a complete cycle. So that means, oops, I should have written a couple of things down, sorry. D is my midline. So I'm trying to do a good job of writing notes here. Um, this is going to be B, and B is your helper to find your period. Helps find period. 
and it's you use that equation 2 pi equals b p okay so with that being said i can use this equation 2 pi equals in this 18 seconds is my period so b times 18 seconds so i'm going to divide by 18 i get b equals 2 pi over 9. so that's how much it travels per second so that pi over nine actually sits right here. And then the last letter <coughs> I need to find is um, C. And C is my phase shift or my horizontal shift, whatever you want to call it. Really, in this case, it's the same thing. Shift. Why was I going to put shaft? It's funny. All right, let's try that again. Okay, so your it's um, your phase shift and your horizontal shift are the same in this case because it's called a phase shift because these are cyclical, right? So where am I going to get that information? So at zero at t equals to zero, we're at a. So here we are at a. It says t equals to zero. My height is equal to zero at that point too, because that's how high it is off of a. And if you're at a, then your height is zero. So if you can imagine your graph, you have the point zero comma zero. And because we're graphing sine, that's middle, high, middle, low, middle. And you can kind of see that there was no shifting left and right. There was no shifting left and right. Okay. So before, if you notice, like in the, I think in 7.2 or 7.1, I'm not sure. I think it's 7.1. Um, we had the writer in different positions, like at B or at C. And that C indicated either his, his angular position where he was on the um, Ferris wheel, or it indicated how much time had passed since he passed A, point A. So we don't have a C in this case. So I'm just going to put a zero in there just so you guys can remember that where did C go? It's zero. And then I'm going to write my equation, clean it up a little. Right. And when I write this out, right, there's my equation. Um, something that you guys can practice is like thinking about what this looks like on a graph without graphing it. And that's really going to help you um, um, think about these, like visualize what this is and what it entails. Okay, part two. It says, at what time is the writer 70 feet above the ground? Show the details of how you answer the problem. So when they say 70 feet above the ground, that's your H. So they want me to plug 70 into this right here, Ms. Johnson? Yes. So we're going to write that equation. 70 equals to 40 sine pi over 9t plus 50. So that doesn't look like 50. Right? And then, um, then we're just going to solve this. And so I'm going to remind you whenever we've solved anything we use sad map here and some of you are like miss johnson it has a sign in there what are we going to do with it don't worry about it because right now he's stuck inside that parentheses so this is where sine it sine and cosine live okay so don't worry about that sign part until you get to um, the parentheses okay so the very first thing for those of you new sad map is pemdos backwards you ask yourself, hey, is there any subtraction or addition on the T side? You're like, yeah, there's a plus 50. So we undo that by subtracting 50. And then we move on to the next variable, which is DM. And then do you see any division or multiplication on the left hand, on the side with T? And you're like, yeah, I see pi over 9 and 40. Now, remember that pi over 9, it's almost like you can't see it because he's inside of sine. Okay, you can't really see him. So then that means you only have to deal with a 40. 
how do you how do you get rid of 40 times sine? Well, yeah, you just divide by sine, right? I mean, sorry, divide by 40. So you get one half equals to sine of pi over nine t, right? And some of you are like, oh my gosh, Ms. Johnson, I know what that is. Because you've memorized your 30, 60, 90 triangle, you know which angle that is, okay? So if you think about sine, for those of you who don't know, if you think about sine, sine's definition is um, this is the opposite and that's the hypotenuse. So I'm going to draw um, a triangle whose opposite is one whose hypotenuse is two. And technically this is a triangle, not all of them, because there's actually another triangle that has a sign of one half. Okay, so for those of you who were like, you memorized your 30, 60, 90 triangle, good job, because you knew that this was a 30, 60, 90 triangle, right? For those of you who didn't, again, my big um, recommendation is for you to memorize your 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, so with that being said, that means that this is the 30 degree or the pi over six. Right, so um, so for those of you who, again, didn't realize all that, right, I'm gonna write some kind of help over here. So if you didn't realize that, you know, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, one of the things that you could have done is how do you get rid of sine? How do you undo sine? And some of you are like, oh, sine inverse, correct. Right? And so when I when these two undo each other, I am left with pi over nine t equals to whatever sine inverse of one half is. Now for those of you 30, 60, 90 who knew, you know it's pi over six. For those of you who don't, you're gonna plug that into your calculator. And the problem with depending on a calculator, I will tell you right now, is that it doesn't give you all the answers. And so that's radians. Let me talk to you in degrees. And you're like, what? It's 30 degrees. That's exactly what you said, Ms. Johnson. I know. So I'm going to write this in terms of um, um, radians because I like radians better. So pi over 6. And then now I'm going to get rid of um, solve for this by either dividing by pi over 9 or just by multiplying by the reciprocal, which is nine over pi. So notice the pi divided by pi is one, and then nine divided by six is, um, they have a common factor of three. So three halves equals to t. So t is three and a half sec, or three halves seconds, or one and a half seconds. Now, I'm just going to give you a little taste, okay? So after three and a half seconds, um, the writer is 70 feet. The writer is 70 feet. So maybe he's, I don't know, here. I'm just going to pretend. So, but if you notice, he's, he also has another time that he's 70 feet, right? So I want you to think about that because that might help you understand what goes here. Okay. I don't know if I drew that correctly there. Okay. All right, let's move on. It says, if you used sine function in problem one, revise your equation to model the same motion with a cosine function. If you use a cosine, revise it to make it sine. So one of the things that they're gonna have you do 
is they're going to have you rewrite functions and like almost like translate it into the other function. Okay. So the way I do this is I grab my function 40 sine pi over 9t plus 50. So my original function is 40 sine pi over 9t plus 50. I think that's right. Yeah, it is. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to convert this to cosine. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say h of t equals to 40 is going to stay the same. Cosine, sine changes into cosine. The 50 is still going to stay the same, right? Because you're still dealing with um, a Ferris wheel that has a radius of 40 and you're still dealing with um, uh, the center of that Ferris wheel being at 50, right? That's all the same. So now I have to figure out cosine. Now, if you remember from our last homework, they gave you a definition and it said sine is equal to cosine and it gave something plus and it was like pi over two. So I just kind of want to show you how to, how I think about this because then it'll make a little bit more sense. So here I go. Here's 40 sine. And then I got pi over 9x plus 50. And I want it in radians so I can actually see my curve. Okay, so there it is. You can see your midline at 50. It's going as high as 90 because that's 50 plus your radius and as low as 50 minus 40, which is the bottom part of the Ferris wheel. And then now I want to do the same exact thing, except for now I want cosine. So I'm going to go 40 cosine um, pi over 9x plus 50, right? So if you notice, right, let me try to zoom in a little. My blue function just got shifted over however much from my black function, okay? My blue function just got shifted over. So I want to talk about this little shifting here because if I can talk about this little shifting here, that's going to help me understand what to, like how much to shift it over, okay? So just in general, I'm just going to show you, this is what we talked about in another video, that when I have sine x and then I have cosine x, right? To shift, to get the green to look like the blue, I just shift it over. I just shifted over, and if you remember, I'm going to just shifting it over pi over 2. Does that make sense? I'm going to shift it to the left pi over 2. So that's exactly what I'm going to write over here. I'm going to write um, so this is a different one, so I'm going to write this. It's going to be pi over 9 t minus pi over two. Okay, so I'm actually going to add that in here. Um, minus pi over two. I'm going to turn all these guys off and these should be the same, which they are. So I'm going to uh, turn off blue and notice black appears. Right? So the way you shift things over is by straight shifting them over. Now remember, Miss Johnson, she likes, she doesn't like it like this. She actually likes it um, when when the pi over nine is outside the parentheses. <coughs> in this case, this is the only time I like it when it's in the parentheses like this, because then you'd have to factor out whatever to get that answer, and I'm not going to do that. Does that make sense? So I'm just going to leave my answer like this. Okay. There you go. 
Then it says, write the equation of the height of the writer at any time t equals to zero when he's at position D. So now we're talking about shifts. So at position D, how much is that? Let's see. So that's one, two, three, four, five. There's 10 pieces of pi here. Okay, so if you think about what angle that's going to be, right? So if this is pi over here, what's this angle here? And you're, some of you are thinking, oh, Ms. Johnson, that's 5 pi over 5. Very good. And I have three slices. So this right here is 3 pi over 5. So that's my that's going to be my shift, right? That is going to be my shift. Okay. Now, Ms. Johnson, which way is it going to go? Is it going to go plus or minus? Because you always say that x lives in backwards land. But because we're moving forward here, it's it's 3 pi over 5. Does that make sense? It's positive 3 pi over 5 because we're moving in the clockwise direction. So I'm going to take my original equation, which is h of t um, equals to 40 <clears throat> sine of pi over 9t plus something plus 50. Now that angle that I'm going to put in here is how much the angle was shifted over, how much the writer was shifted over in the Ferris wheel. Okay, so I'll write that as a note. Um, where the writer starts. Okay. A position D. Okay. It says for the equation you wrote in problem four, at what time is the writer 80 feet above the ground? Okay. Equation four, 80 feet above the ground. So then I'm just going to take my 80 and put it where? Where does that 80 go? Yeah, you're right. It goes in H. So let me write that equation. So we get 80 equals 40 sine um, pi over 9t plus 3 pi over 5 plus 50. And then I'm just going to solve this, okay? You guys should be comfortable with solving this, right? So subtract 50. I get 30 equals 40 sine um, pi over 9t plus 3 pi over 5. And then I divide by 40, so that's 3 fourths sine of pi over 9t plus 3 fifths pi. <clears throat> and some of you are thinking, oh, Ms. Johnson, this is not one of those triangles that we recognize. You're right because none of our triangles has a four in it with a three, right? So this is not gonna be a 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90. So then I have to use the sine inverse. So I'm gonna sine inverse both sides. I'm just gonna squash them in there. So now I have sine inverse of three fourths, whatever that is, equals to sine, no, no, not sine, sorry, equals to pi over nine t, plus 3 pi over 5. Okay. Okay, so then I go on here and I do sine inverse of 3 fourths, and I get 0.848. Now, normally I would switch this over to degrees, but because on my right side of the equation is already in radians, I have to leave it in that. So I'm going to leave this as 0 0.848 is equal to, or it's about equal to pi over 9t plus 3 pi over 5. Um, and then I'm going to subtract 3 pi over 5. And so I'm just going to do that here. So 
So now, so subtract 3 pi over 5. So now I get negative 1.037 equals to pi over 9t. And then to get rid of that, I'd multiply by 9 over pi. Multiply this by 9 over pi. So again, I'm just going to multiply this whole thing by 9 over pi. Which is negative... 2.97 seconds, which you're like, wait, what? It's about three seconds. So it doesn't actually make sense because it's negative. Negative time doesn't make sense. But if you look at my graph, you can kind of see um, that there is, you know, kind of like to the left, like a place where it would be, even though that's the wrong equation, but that's okay, right? <clears throat> so the way we're going to figure this out is we have to, so can you think about like, like here's the writer, oops, here's the writer and he's right here. He starts here, but three seconds ago, he was at 80 feet he was at 80 feet. So, so maybe like maybe negative three means three seconds ago. Does that make sense? That's what I mean by that. So maybe he's like, I don't know, here-ish, right? But that, that actually makes sense. Like his position right here makes sense, but it doesn't make sense with our answer being negative three. So instead of thinking about us going backwards, I wonder if there's a way for us to think about it going forwards because that's the way he's traveling. Carlos is traveling around. So you're like, wait, Ms. Johnson, how long does it take him to go all the way around a circle? And it's 18 seconds. So I can add 18 seconds to this and then the answer now makes sense. At 15 seconds, after 15 seconds, that's when the rider is 80 feet above the ground. But Ms. Johnson, you don't have to add one circle. You can add multiple circles and that would be true. You're right. So I can add any number of, of rotations and that'll, be, and that'll work. Okay, so I'm gonna put 18 in. So it's at 15 seconds and then they go around again, right? After he passes that, he, they go around again. So now it's at plus 18 again, so that's, 33 seconds, right? So those are our answers. Okay, I'm gonna pause right here.